Hey guys, Thomas here. Welcome back to the continuation of the AI vs Human Drone Racing video we did a few weeks back. Well, maybe more than a few weeks back. The last video raised many questions, comments and opinions which were fascinating and enjoyable to read and discuss. Thank you to those who watched and shared their thoughts on the subject. In this video, we'll run through the process of teaching the AI to fly a brand new track. If you haven't watched the first video in the series, I'd highly recommend watching that first as it covers the primary concepts of the project in much more detail. On the last day before our flight, we did a final round of testing with the university. The consistency today is way better than the other days. I'm not sure if this is going to make the cut for the video, but yeah, basically this is, I'm catching a flight in a few hours, but uh, we're just doing some last testing, grabbing some last minute data. Um, especially now the guys are well rested and sort of able to go through things and keep working. So today it's been performing really well. Probably the best we've seen it by a big, big margin. I think at the peak, the humans will pick up, but mm -hmm. the consistency yeah. is just not there. Like, yeah. if, you don't, if I'm wrong off the start, it's just- It's gone. I'm gone, that's it, yeah. it's not coming back. After completing the testing, we had around 90 minutes left before we had to leave the lab and catch our flight. The team asked if I'd like to create a brand new track for them and use it to demonstrate how the AI is trained and allowing us to document the process. The team had never attempted training the AI on a new track in such a short time, so it was going to be exciting to see how it would perform within the time constraint. First, I had to design a track. The only prerequisite for this was the entire course had to fit in the vision of the Vicon camera system, so staying within the usable space, I tried to make a course that I would love to fly myself. My main focus point was the slalom section. I wanted the track to have as much personality as possible, so I leveraged the tall elements to create some unique lines at eccentric angles, which helped to make the track both interesting from a data standpoint, but most of all, make it something really satisfying to fly and watch over and over again. At this point, it's worth recapping what the Vicon drone actually is. The Vicon drone consists of a completely standard racing drone, fitted with at least four tracking markers. These are exactly the same as what's used for CGI motion tracking in movies. Along the roof of the flight arena, there are 36 cameras operating at 400 frames per second. These track the drone in 3D space, send that data to a computer which uses that information to compute flight commands that are sent to the drone via TBS Tracer. Basically, using the tracking markers in a T configuration, they were able to digitize the location of each gate and the direction the drone is required to enter to pass through each gate slash waypoint. This also involved marking virtual waypoints for the slalom. What they're doing now is measuring where the gates are in 3D space using some of the tracking balls from the Vicon system. Once they've got that, I'm going to do some laps, make sure it's correct. And then they should be able to start training their algorithms and get it dialed in for the Vicon system, JS1, flying the track. What you're looking at here is the AI simulating and working out how to fly the track. You can see it's worked out how to do the start into the big sweeper. However, it's stuck on the first slalom gate. So, so here you can see that it misses the gate, it doesn't pass through the gate and then it tries to loop around and it doesn't manage to loop through the gate correctly until the episode is ended. While the AI was training in simulation, I was flying on the real course so they could study the lines I would take as a human pilot versus the lines the AI would take when it would eventually run the track. Note, I was flying the much heavier 4-cell vision drone compared to the Vicon drone which would actually fly, which is a top-of-the-line open-class JS1 racing drone, basically an identical setup to what I race in the real world. So we still have some mismatch. And that's why we want to be very conservative in simulation. Yeah. And then we will, we can be, we can be more certain that we won't crash in the gates. Really. Yeah. I love this. My main concern is that it will hit one of these gates here when it cuts too tight. Yeah. When it yeah. cuts too tight. But the other part looks very good. I mean, here it goes full full speed. What's what's the speed here? Thirty meters a second wow. on this corner. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's crazy. Let's talk about a full send, eh? Beautiful. You see, we put some helping gates, right? Yeah. So there are some gates which are not actually there. Yeah. Wow. It can do the whole course now. Yeah. So now it's just optimizing. Okay, around 32 minutes since I designed the track. 
and they've been going at this. They're cutting the simulation printing off early. They think they got a high enough resolution to try a first real pass. And they're, normally they'd actually let it run longer in simulation, but for the sake of time, we're just sending it and praying for the best. And it looks like it's gonna do a full send on the first. Yeah, yeah, it only knows how to full send. It's, um, <laughs> yeah, one or a zero. <laughs> Not moving off. Yeah. Full send. Oh. So these guys are legit crazy. It's 11.30. Wow. When did we start? It's about 32 minutes we're into it. Can you explain what we're doing, Christian? So now um, we use the bike and tracking system. So these marker balls, they will give us an exact position of the drone. But uh, the cameras, they don't uh, actually know that these balls belong together, right? To create an object, we need to now put the drone in the center of the room very accurately in the right orientation. So this will be the X, Y and Z axis. And now my colleague Drew, he will basically select the markers and he will define an object, which we call Sparrow in this case. This is when really cool science happens because we just try things that we don't normally try and we see what happens. Okay, this is it. The Ficon JS1 race drone on the track for the first time ever. As of about 40 minutes ago, this course didn't even exist but it's ran some simulation laps, and it's time to see how it works in a real-world deployment. Enjoy! What are you doing back there, Tom? Safety! <laughs> <Can we record? laughs> so is this where the control inputs are coming from? So here we have a standard uh, TBS tracer, yep. uh, TX, and we're basically um, now sending the control commands, yep. local roll pigeon from the computer. So it's bound. There you go. Okay, I will arm now. And hover. Okay. This is scary as. This is so scary. <laughs> They've never done this before. This is under an hour and it's going to launch. That was brutal, wasn't it? I got it in slow-mo, I got it to 40 FPS. Did you? Yeah. Oh wow. I had to. As much as it crashed at the end there, you have to admit that was really spectacular. That was its first deployment on that course and it didn't even get its full simulation time that it's meant to have. University also put a camera on the Vicon drone to show us what it would look like from an FPV perspective. In this case, it doesn't actually use the FPV system to fly, it's purely flying off of the Vicon system overhead, but this gives a good insight into how the drone sort of looks flying through the air if you were to FPV this flight path. So there you go, that is the Vicon drone, their AI system, learning from start to finish how to fly a course and a real world deployment. I hope you guys have enjoyed the video and this series. Just a quick update, I know we've been really behind on videos, but we are pushing to get them out in the coming weeks, which will include coverage for the Mission Foods Australian Drone Nationals, Global Drone Solutions Western Australian State Championships, along with the Japan Drone League held in Toyota City. I hope you found this video informative and enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, don't forget to like and comment if that's your thing, and catch you in the next one.